Kunal, uh, if you can unmute yourself and yeah, 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 I'll unmute. No question. problem. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, such a such a lovely event, such a lovely. I hope everyone can see my screen. My screen is right now in front of everyone. Thank you, uh, everyone, to you know invite me and as as a one of the key keynote speakers. And uh, we are answering a question: Why? Why is India really so important? I cannot cover like in the in the next five minutes. I cannot cover ten thousand points about India, but I can cover definitely one amongst those. Not just yoga, but the rest of the cultural event and everything regarding the tradition of India is very important. So I would like to cover one point amongst all that thing, which will which will give you a glimpse of exactly what we are talking about when we speak about Indian culture and. Here, I'm going to take you guys like 4,600 years ago when it was named as Dwapar Yug, that is before, before this uh, Kali Yug, right? So you can go ahead and, you know, search on Google exactly what the yuga, Yugas are, what is the period of time. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely cover this topic for you, that how the transaction used to happen. So in five minutes, I cannot, I cannot tell you exactly the details, but I can tell you a story. And this story is of the Gokul, where our Lord Krishna was a part of. In Gokul, there were 1.2 million cows, and these cows and these all villages, which was been leaded by father of Lord Krishna, that is Nanda, and he used to be the leader of exactly what to do with these all milk and milk products that has to be done, that has to be shipped, and that has to be logistically given to everyone. Because this was the only, only village which had a lot of cows and a lot of uh, milk and all the milk products. So what the Nanda used to do is that he, and amongst all of the 11 or kings and kingdoms that used to be in the Indian subcontinent, as you can see, Gokul how they used to deliver milk and milk products to everyone. Now, out of this, only four of the dots that you can see in the orange color, which was basically the main rulers, that is the winners of the Mahabharata war, that is the Suryavanshis. Rest all, at the time when Krishna was a kid, was not really a part of the Suryavanshi kingdom. So now, cross kingdoms, cross cultures, cross maybe languages, they have to transact with them and make sure that the milk they get the right uh, they get the right value for the milk and milk products. So how this used to happen in that particular time is they used a very unique kind of economy, which was a very complex economy. But with this complex economy, the people were extremely peaceful. And I'm going to explain you what this complex economy was. First stage of the economy was basically the stage that you have it right now, that is currency. Each country has a different currency, but each currency has a different value. So whenever a commodity has to be purchased, you have to give the currency and the commodity becomes, you know, the, the, you can purchase a commodity. And each commodity has to have a value, which is, which is very equivalent to what the currency where, where you're transacting. That was the such, that was just a first dimension of currency exchange. But in the time of Dwapar uh, uh, Yug, there was second dimension, which was also like equivalent to currency, and that was grains and food items. So if, a if there is a farmer and he doesn't have money, but he has loads, loads and loads of grains, he, is also, he was also termed as rich because he can just give uh, give those grains and take whatever he wants for his family. The third level, the third dimension of economy or transaction used to happen, which was which was in materials, precious materials. Today you will say that you know what we can also transact with materials today. The answer is no, you cannot. So, for example, can you take the materials and go to vegetable or a mall and tell them you know take this material and give me goods? It is not happening today. But at that time. If you wanted anything, you could really buy with your material. So this was the third dimension of the transaction that used to happen. So complex. The fourth dimension was the fertile soil and the technology. 
we hear the example like for example pulley or any kind of bullock cart or any kind of new wheel that they used to they used to make that also was a part of the entire transaction so i can transact my knowledge i can transact my fertile soil i can transact the technique that i've used to make sure that i'll get whatever i want like for example i want furniture at my place i can get that with the fourth dimension fifth and the last dimension was the king's command that is if king commands that this particular object or this particular uh, people can be transacted and they can be uh, you know uh, uh, different things can that can be bought through that particular command or from the ministry that also was another dimension of uh, you know buying things so a commodity cannot just get purchased by currency but it was also being purchased by grains metals even technologies livestock or kingdom itself it was so interesting but how everything would have would uh, was managed at that particular time uh, there is the level at which sophistication that these all things were managed and that level was called resistance to peace each kingdom where there is peace the value of those particular aspect in the five dimension was higher while the kingdom who are facing resistance from the people themselves even though they are peaceful they are there's no conflict there's no war as such but there is resistance of people the value of those particular goods came down so the peace was not asked by the kingdom it was been implemented by the people because if they don't have peace in their own kingdom the value of whatever i have land my grains my currency my metals everything came down why because i am not happy with my my kingdom and this complex structure was been utilized at the time of you know at the time of krishna just to make sure that they can transact well so this is like a five dimensional trade approach but even if this trade approach is so complex the people around india were extremely happy and peaceful but today even if we have a one dimensional trade approach all over the world then to conflicts resistance rights and in uncertainty is all over the world one dimensional trade approach is decreasing the uh, solving the problem of simplicity in what you have as a currency or a you know asset but it is increasing the conflict all over the world by by multiple folds and that is a lesson that was been taught by everyone in that particular and in that particular age so 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 this particular technology this particular system of economy that we used 4600 years ago was so effective that it was ensuring that each person each citizen used to be rewarded for whatever you know uh, whatever they do